Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Today I want to share my favorite minimalist house hacks with you, starting with our living room. And if you like this video and there are other rooms that you would like to see, please let me know what you wanna see next in the comments below. Now, before I get into it, I wanna quickly say, if you are expecting my home to be incredibly minimal and Spartan, then you may be disappointed. It is not, but that's actually by design. First of all, I live here with my husband and he is not a minimalist, but I think more to the point and more importantly, we want our house to feel comfortable and lived in. We are very intentional with the things that we bring into our home, but if you're expecting a basically empty room with a camp stool and a plant in the corner, that's not us. Second, I wanna give credit where credit is due. I had the idea to make a video like this a while ago, but Anna from the Anna Edit beat me to it. She's made a similar series of videos kind of around organization, and before she gets into each room, she gives you a little tour around her space. So I thought I would take a page out of her book and show you around before getting into the tips. Plus, I never really gave you guys an update after we did some redecorating a while ago, so it's kind of a twofer. When you first walk into our living room, we have this console table, lamp, and mirror all on this wall. To be honest, we don't really use this table for storing our personal effects. We keep things like bags, purses, sunglasses, that kind of thing in our entryway closet so they're tucked away and out of sight. Honestly, Danny uses this table for napping more than anyone, but I do really like this mirror because it makes it really easy to check yourself out and make sure you're okay before you head out the door instead of having to run back into one of the other rooms in the house to see what you look like before going out. And because there are no windows on this side of the room, it really helps to bounce light around and make the space feel more open. Moving right along. Over here we have our built-in bookcases flanking this archway to our kitchen diner and the rest of our home. I am not much of an avid reader, my husband is, although to be fair, nowadays he mostly reads books on his phone or on his e-reader, but I am kind of traditional, and so if I'm going to have these big built-in bookcases, I want them to hold books rather than meaningless tchotchkes from a home goods. Then on the other side of this room, we have most of our furniture and all of our seating. Uh, we did upgrade our old love seat to a full length sofa a little while ago, and I am so happy with it. I've always wanted a Chesterfield. I like that it is, the leather, first of all, is incredibly soft. It feels really good. I like the, the way you can sort of drape yourself over the side. I also like that it's a rather traditional piece, so I feel like it helps to balance out some of the other more modern elements of our home. And then we have these two enormous matching wing back chairs. I wanted two matching chairs and it took me forever to find them. We have a little table in between for holding tissues. There's a coaster there. We can put our drinks on it or phones or um, whatever we need uh, on that table. And then we have our coffee table here as well. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the curtains. These are actually the same curtains from Ikea that we've had for a really long time. And I think whenever we hung them the first time, we got the height of them right. We hung them quite high, which I think is good and takes advantage of the height of the room. But we had them too far in on the windows and it was blocking a lot of the light. So we swapped out originally we just had the curtains on the rod itself but we picked up these rings from ikea to make the curtains easier to open and close and it also meant that we could put a few of the rings can you see them on the other side the little bracket is actually kind of in the middle but we have two rings on the other side which allowed us to open up the windows a lot more and now this space gets a ton more light than it used to and it was super cheap. We didn't have to replace the curtains or the hardware. We just added the rings. All right, tour complete. Let's get into the tips. My first is to ditch your TV. Now, I'll be honest, we have not gotten rid of our TV, but you don't see it in this room. It now lives in our shed. I have not convinced my husband to completely let it go. A couple of times a year, he drags it out of the shed to play video games, but I'm gonna pick my battles, and to be honest, that is good enough for me. I really appreciate not having some massive TV being the centerpiece of our main living area. I feel like anytime you have a TV in a room, that becomes the thing that you do in that room, and so it also takes up a lot of 
visual space. There's a lot of visual noise, like you just focus on it. So I think that not having a TV in this space allows us to do other things. And we do watch TV, we do watch shows, but we watch it on our laptop, which can then be folded away and put away whenever we're done. My second tip is to hide or disguise power cords. I am really proud of how I was able to disguise the cord from this lamp underneath this console table by taping it underneath the table so that you don't have this distracting droopy cord vying for your attention. You can also use cord covers or existing furniture and decor that you have to make power cords and power strips less obvious. Tip number three is to use open furniture or leggy furniture to make a small space feel bigger. Now, I kind of discovered this by accident, but it really is effective. If your pieces are open rather than solid and bulky, then your eye can pass through them rather than being stopped by that item. And even if you have a bigger space, I think that having a mix of solid and open pieces can provide some more visual interest and keep your space from feeling heavy. This next tip is one that I am super late to the party on, so maybe you're already there. I am just happy to have finally arrived, and that is pillow covers. So until now, pretty much all of the throw pillows that I've ever owned have been the type where the stuffing and the exterior pillowcase have been permanently affixed, so if I changed my mind or the seasons changed or I wanted to change up the style of my room, then I was stuck storing or dealing with a whole cushion. Now we have changed out those previous throw pillows for pillows that have removable and changeable pillow covers. It's so easy to fold these up. I mean, right now I only have the three that are currently on my couch, but I am actually looking forward to the change of seasons. And you guys know me, I'm so slow when it comes to interior decorating, but I'm actually really looking forward to swapping out our kind of seasonless pillowcases for ones that are fun and wintry. And whenever I do that, I will not have to have a giant bin of pillow cushions to store or deal with. And speaking of cushions, we got pillows that are down and feather filled. And if you are chopping away to no avail at a foam pillow and you can't get that perfect karate chop, I don't think you can ever get a good karate chop with a synthetic pillow. So if you are not allergic, get you some down pillows. My fifth and final tip is one that I'm struggling to put into some pithy and succinct way. I think I'm gonna call it create balance with neutrals. Anyway, whenever I was designing this space, I knew that we were going to have a lot of visual interest and visual noise coming from our open bookshelves with all of the books. And so I wanted the rest of the space to be pretty calm and neutral and mellow to help balance out that cacophony of book spines. So whether you two have a lot of books or pet toys or kid toys, whatever kind of reality you are dealing with, try to take stock of how much visual noise that is going to introduce into your space on a regular basis. And then as much as possible, neutralize the other elements of your room to appropriately balance that out. All right, those are my top minimalist living room hacks. Of course, these are really just my reflections of living in my own space and with my own lifestyle. There may be plenty of other things that you guys out there are doing. So if there are other hacks that you swear by, especially for a living room space, please let me know about them in the comments down below. I would love to hear about them and maybe try a few myself if they fit. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments down below which room you would like to see next. All right, that's going to be it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you're all being safe out there, and I'll see you next time. And I have to go feed the cat.